Welcome to Cracklex. Spider-Man 4 is one of the few modern Marvel projects about which one wants to talk and build theories. The movie's plot is still a mystery, but there are a few hints in the earlier scenes and in Marvel's statements. On the basis of them, we can make assumptions about what we might see, the antagonist, and the subject matter of the sequel. That's what we're going to do in the upcoming few minutes, no rumors or news leaks, just irrational thought processes and plot holes. One of them is that we all fail to notice the unfortunate fact that the main issue that led Doctor Strange to decide to cast a spell at the beginning of the movie in the first place, and at the end of the movie they decided only on half, was hidden behind the appearance of the old spiders and the multiverse showdown in No Way Home. Keep in mind that Mysterio, who at the conclusion of Part 2 accused Spider-Man of being responsible for his death and revealed to the world that Peter Parker was hiding behind the mask, was where it all began. Except for the fact that the problem wasn't going to be solved, Doctor Strange succeeded in making everyone forget that Parker was Spider-Man at the conclusion of the third act. There are still many people on the planet who believe that Spider-Man is a murderer because nobody has forgotten about Spider-Man as a character. The trial of Peter Parker was the main subject of No Way Home's first third. He was dubbed the enemy No, won by Jonah Jameson. Parker was under a lot of pressure because of the murder charges against Mysterio. Not because being Spider-Man is illegal, as many people could be seen in the frame mourning Mysterio. In every picture, Peter Parker's face has become hazy. According to that reasoning, the face would also have vanished as a result of Mysterio's treatment at the end of Part 2, but the public is still aware that the character could have been killed by Spider-Man. So much for the first plot point that Marvel must take into account in Part 4. Yes, the majority of the authorities' rulings in Parker's innocence will be accepted, but the same Jonah Jameson won't stop and will keep sullying spider reputation. He'll have a more compelling justification than he did in the Tobey Maguire trilogy. We predict that the Mysterio footage will be changed in the opening scenes of the fourth Tom Holland movie to both fill in a plot hole and serve as a reminder that spider identity man's in the current Marvel Cinematic Universe is unclear. Given the spell that Strange cast, it's likely that the introduction will also depict how the battle on the Statue of Liberty appeared to regular people. In turn, it will motivate Peter to adopt a more responsible strategy for preserving his cover. Since anyone on the street could have guessed that he was Spider-Man in the first trilogy, extreme caution is now needed. We predict that Peter will be generally reclusive and unlikely to make friends in the fourth installment of Spider-Man. This is significant because Tom Holland has at last developed to the caliber of the original Tobey Maguire movie. He is now a student rather than a high schooler. Harry Osborn is a character that Marvel needs in Spider-Man 4 by all available logic. He was Peter Parker's best friend right out of college in the comics. Oh, and the subsequent transformation of Harry into a villain, as it occurred in the Maguire trilogy, is a juicy enough plot development to not mention. The last time Dane DeHaan's character Harry appeared in a film was almost 10 years ago. From 2007 to 2017, a total of three different actors played Spider-Man for Marvel. It is possible to reboot Harry Osborn at least once in such a long time, but the move would be too obvious. Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin also portrays the character's moment of apparent familiarity. He was already sort of the main antagonist, but it would be simple and awesome to make a movie where Peter Parker meets Harry Osborn and a Norman Osborn from his universe. Just picture Tom Holland's horror at seeing a version of Norman from his universe where, for instance, he turns out to be the nicest guy and Parker is constantly suspicious of him for a few movies. So when fate and a well-written script finally convince Norman that he is innocent, Norman also transforms into a green goblin in this world. You can emotionally swing so hard that people will be carried on a stretcher out of movie theaters. In actuality, however, we are all aware that Marvel is currently writing the script and hiring interns to save money. If the Avengers 5 claims a man who also directed Ant-Man 3 and 2.5 series, how can we expect Christopher Nolan-level surprises in Spider-Man 4? It's a good guess that Kevin Feige will create a transgender man in the role of Osborn, written off entirely from another comic book character. This is what happened with Ned Leeds from the first trilogy, and it's most likely going to happen with Harry Osborn in the second trilogy by design, though his name will be different. Someone will undoubtedly impose as a friend of unloved Peter Parker, simply because no one will pick up on the plot's lack of a resolution. After the touching conclusion of the fourth movie, it would be very strange if Marvel brought back Zendaya and Jacob Paitlin. The couple will undoubtedly appear on screen, but they will be skipped over for at least one scene because the Tom Holland franchise needs new faces for both the marketing and the plot. The love interest is the same. 
After bidding Zende a farewell in the previous movie, a reunion in the following one will seem absurd. At least Spider-Man needs a new girl to flirt with. There are many options here because of the comics. The X-Men character Kitty Pride, attorney Michelle Gonzalez, Gwen Stacy's sister Jill, and even Captain Marvel are included. In the comics, Peter Parker is a cable, but we'd bet on his relationship with Black Cat in the fourth movie specifically because that character isn't typically interested in Peter Parker in the first place, but rather in Spider-Man. The best choice is nowhere for the fourth part's plot, in which Parker will be a page of regular people. The conclusion of the love triangle will be intriguing in the fifth or sixth installments, and we will discuss the antagonist of the potential movie from a distance because the concept itself is what matters most. The conflict with Mysterio, the multiverse in No Way Home, and the scene following the credits all scream to Tom Holland the same message. It's time to go back out there. And not even when it comes to weaker and more relatable villains, in the sense that, as was the case in each movie in the Tobey Maguire trilogy, the antagonist should have become personal by this point. The adversaries of Tony Stark are the vulture Mysterio that Tom Holland faced. It's about time Holland got his own personally connected and personally motivated villain, like Dr. Octopus was in the 2004 film, since the Green Goblin is an enemy of Maguire. Although he didn't pose a threat on a level of the Avengers, his familiarity with Peter Parker and purely philosophical inquiries made him one of the most memorable characters in history. I wish Marvel would understand that you don't have to say Battlestar Galactica in every movie, you can create a compelling antagonist using only scripted elements. Ned Leeds, who was once known as Hop Goblin in comic books, is the only choice left for Tom Holland at this point. The plot is very similar to Parker's friendship with Harry Osborn, but the current Marvel will add a twist to it. In the end, let's assume that Ned Leeds turns evil simply because Doctor Strange removed his memories of his best friend, without whom Ned goes awry, and Peter Parker, in turn, remembers everything but is powerless to stop his old friend's transformation. It does seem to be that very real-world, individual tale. However, there are typically two issues. The first is that the screenwriters from the independent TV series enter the scene halfway through, and the second is Jake Battle, whose presence does not in any way suggest a villain. True, such miracles were not performed by the magic of film. Therefore, that situation is quite workable in our opinion. Finally, let's talk about the main point, which is crucial to see in the fourth section. That particular detail is the almost total lack of allusions to Kang the Conqueror, Doctor Strange, and the Avengers. Spider-Man from Marvel has a history of siding with Nick Fury over Tony Stark, and when the movie universe was strong, that worked just fine. Phase 4 is fear and terror, and you really don't want Kevin Feige to include another group of Wakanda residents with the intention of giving them a well-deserved 1 in 10 audience rating and making no one else interested in their solo movie. The request may seem ironic given that Feige has previously been asked to connect the projects in other videos, but that's the point. Spider-Man hasn't typically faced issues like these. We've already seen enough of his relationship with other heroes, though there aren't any at the moment, so Marvel had better take care of their Moon Knights and Kate Bishop first, in my opinion. Add Spider-Man to the mix as well. After all, he needs a solo project that is as detached as possible if only to keep Frankenstein's heroes from affecting his ratings. Additionally, from the standpoint of the plot, Tom Holland's character needs to mature, find his own personal villains, and stand on his own two feet. I don't want another attempt to gain iron-hearted popularity to ruin one of the few remaining decent characters. Thank you for watching, see you next time!